All right, he was the man behind Brexit. He made it happen. He campaigned hard to make sure Britain cut its ties with the European community, and it worked. Now there are reports that Nigel Farage is helping Donald Trump make it to the White House by helping him prepare for next week's debate. Whether you like Mr. Farage or not, he is very good at that debate thing. He joins us now out of Strasbourg, France. Nigel, very good to have you. Put these rumors to rest. Are you Thank or you. are you not helping Donald Trump? I'm coming out this weekend for the second debate, um, and I'm coming out as a guest, I'm coming out as a commentator. Uh, but you know what? Uh, the advice I've got for Donald Trump, I don't need to give to him face to face. I can give it to you right now on this show. It's very simple. The Clinton team analyzed that Trump is a proud man, proud of his achievements, proud of himself, and proud of his family. And that if you attack him on his record, if you try and tear to bits, you know, his business empire and his past, he will defend himself. And my advice to Donald Trump is dead simple. Do not be accused of financial impropriety by the Clintons. Do not be told you're a misogynist by a woman whose Clinton Foundation has taken money from Saudi Arabia. Rise above. Don't get in, just don't get involved in some sort of terrible catfight. Rise above it and tell the American people why you are the candidate for change. But what you're saying is don't be on defense, be on offense, but part of getting on offense is to be clearly offended by the criticism that Hillary leveled at him. Now, how does he balance that between looking thin-skinned, as some said he did in that first debate, by focusing on every slight when he could have just, you know, sloughed it off and zeroed in on the attack on her, as he did, by the way, in the first 20 or so minutes of that debate? Oh, the first 20 minutes, uh, I thought he was tremendous. I, mean, I was hearing somebody standing to be American president who was talking a language I have not heard since Reagan. He was talking about cutting taxes. He was talking about giving people incentives. He was talking about the American dream, allowing people to get on. He was great in that first section. And then she very cleverly and very cynically, and with that horrible, smug expression on her face, went for him personally and he sought to defend himself in front of the American public and Donald I'd say this to you you know don't take abuse from a Clinton look at their track record in a whole raft of areas forget about her ignore the criticisms go out there connect with ordinary people you've got some messages on tax cutting you've got some messages on controlling borders and security in an age of terrorism that people really do want to hear now um, your definition of smug might be confident but we'll leave that out uh, aside and get your sense of how he responds on this tax thing. Um, she has already pointed out that he bragged about being very smart not having to pay uh, so much in taxes, if any, if those uh, indications are right. But you argue that he should turn it around and say you're a fine one to be talking about financial propriety. Is that the gist of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so typical of the Hillary hypocrisy, isn't it? She attacks Trump over his tax arrangements, knowing, of course, before the leak, funny how she knew beforehand, isn't it? But attacking him for what is a perfectly legal part of American tax law. You when think she had a heads up on Clinton's those release themselves. forms? You think she had a heads up on those release forms? I am absolutely certain of it. And come on, just look at what's happened since she made those claims. But now we know that the Clintons themselves in 2015 registered a capital gains loss which they can carry over and okay there are two more noughts on the figure with Trump he's a bigger financial player than the Clintons but the fact is that all these things that Hillary accuses Trump of she is guilty of herself and I would say to Donald Trump you know do not take moralizing lessons from the Clintons on money laugh her off the American public will get it and explain to them how you want to help business, you want to help industry, you want to cut taxes, that you actually believe in America and are proud to be patriotic and will make it a safer country. Do those things, rise above her jibes, rise above, and I repeat it, her smug expression, and you will win this next debate. All right, you do not seem to be a huge fan of Hillary Clinton, but... Uh... We'll see. Maybe I missed something. But, um, Nigel, bottom line, you are saying whatever advice you're offering, you just offered it right now, that you do not expect to be personally helping him with the debate. 
Uh, whether I do or whether I don't is irrelevant. I've just told you absolutely from my heart. It's what not I irrelevant to me. Our to viewers want to know. They, a lot debate. of them really like you now. If, if it turns out one of the best debaters on the planet, and that's coming from people who like you and hate you, uh, is he advising Donald Trump? Listen, if they want my advice, I'm available. It's All just right. as simple as that. Because and it set on. off alarms. And this election is simple. All right. This, well, all over the place. Sure. But this election is now simple. Do you want things to carry on the same, or do you want change? And Trump represents change. All right. Nigel, always good seeing you. Thank you very, very much. And Nigel Farage, the man who made Thank Brexit you. possible when everyone and every poll seemed to say it wasn't going to happen. And he say, thanks to that gentleman, it did.